<clears throat> Morning, it's Paul Hober here from Physiotherapy again. Um, just going to talk to you very quickly on this sunny Friday morning about radial shockwave therapy. So here we've got the radial shockwave applicator. We're on 1.5 bar pressure with a frequency or hertz of 10. We've got 2,000 shocks put on there. Very simple operation. Hit the button and the power comes through there. So this is one of the standard heads here. So we're looking at a, a fairly sort of shallow depth of where we're going to get the shock wave. And remember with radial, it does fan out in that radial sphere there. Um, very, very safe application of shock wave this. I have to say that um, it's unlikely you're going to do any damage with this in any part of the body. Um, we have historically always said, be very careful over lung tissue, possibly even in the auxilla. Um, or over the femoral triangle of the hip. Um, recent information coming from one of the top people at Storts that we went out and visited a couple of weeks ago said that with the radial head, unless you've got a deep impact, it's unlikely <coughs> that you're going to do much damage. In fact, they said that there's a fantastic use of this for intercostal muscles around the ribs. Now, it's up to you because you, as an avid user, may well have been told avoid all the lung tissue. Really what we're talking about there is when you're using focus shockwave or perhaps deep impact on here. You've got to think about the depths that that's getting to where the lung tissue sits. So really what we're starting to do is, is, is take some of the gloves off in terms of how this can be used. No longer do we view it just as the kind of six, seven main tendons. So it, there's obvious um, guidance and, and information out there for plantar fasciopathy, Achilles tendinopathy, patella tendon, high hamstring, either side of your epicondyles at the elbow and uh, for the shoulder also. So they're the key indications that everyone's using it for. But did you know that using shockwave on medial tibial stress syndrome or shin splints, there's a 40% improvement in recovery time. Now that is incredible. If you think about what this is doing, this is emitting an audio and a physical shockwave into the target tissues. If you think about medial tibial stress syndrome, you would like to think you're going to get a reaction on the soft tissues, but also the bone tissue. This is about the only thing on the market that can do both. Hence, it is pretty much stands to reason that you're going to get 40% improvement um, on something like shin splints where both tissues are involved. Um, in terms of success stories recently, um, I've actually had somebody with a adductor longus origin, a groin strain, if you, if you want to go by um, the more common terminology. Um, and we used this for six sessions on that groin strain with an immediate return to play for football, soccer, wherever you're watching this. Um, now, typically a groin strain would take ever such a long time. It was correctly diagnosed. We did the, the shockwave therapy we were doing um, two and a half thousand shocks, and we we're up to um, a bar pressure of 3.2 towards the end there. Um, the, the recent papers are telling you that the highest bar pressure that you can get the patient to withstand, <coughs> up to about seven out of 10, gets the best clinical results. I personally use a protocol of six sessions. I find that works best. Um, other things, I mean, plantar fasciitis, Achilles uh, tendinopathy, as far as I'm concerned, I don't really treat anybody for those without using shockwave. It has revolutionized my practice. And if somebody comes in with either of those, and I don't necessarily need them to be chronic, we are treating people quite quickly into that within the first few weeks, and we get excellent results. In fact, uh, um, uh, Storts um, did actually say that the sooner you can get onto these um, injuries, the better, in fact. So this notion that you have to have failed you know two lots of physio before you get started i think we're trying to lift the veil on that as well um i personally have had pretty mixed results with regards to tennis elbow golfer's elbow with the radial device however absolutely superb results with the uh, focus device uh, and i think there is a real need for clinics that specialize in shockwave to have both a radial and a focus device because uh, you know, each one works better on, on, on different things. I think calcific tendonitis of the shoulder 
absolutely perfect with the focus device. But let's stick with radial. A couple more success stories for you. Um, I had somebody come in the other day with recurrent, and I mean long-term chronic Achilles tendinopathy, had tried everything, spent thousands of pounds, one session uh, of radial shockwave therapy, and we only got up to a bar pressure of about 2.2, I believe that 1.8 is when you're getting a therapeutic dose, um, and the person felt amazing, not just the due to the hyperstimulation anesthesia, that short period of two hours of, of pain reduction, but by the time they came back seven days later, they'd already noticed an 80% improvement in their symptoms. I know this person after the six weeks of treatment is going to be in a, you know, perfect condition, if you will, uh, and back to running as regularly as they want to. Um, I mean, I've got countless, but, but another one in particular was a um, gluteal tendinopathy. And we use radial for that as well, but with a deep impact head, that's the gold color head. And we went straight into the gluteal tendinopathy uh, and within three sessions, along with the isometric um, strength work as well, this person was completely pain free. We've got another two, uh, two sessions to do now, we did one yesterday, and, um, and this person is gonna get a great result. Remember, when you're offering shockwave therapy to your patients, it is imperative that you explain to them there is a short-lived hyperstimulation anesthesia after the treatment, not to become downhearted two or three hours down the line when they, they feel their pain is returning. Um, but, but also, you, you need to really make them aware that there is about four and a half month period of time from when you do the first treatment session. So you've got protocol of six sessions. After the last session, you've got 90 days of collagen synthesis to take place. So from when you start that first treatment, there's a four and a half month lag, if you like, until they get the full results. But I'm here to tell you that most of the time I'm finding people are hitting results after three sessions. And those that don't, by the time they turn up for their um, sixth session, they're reporting an 80% improvement. So you don't need to wait that three months to get the improvement. Now, one last thing before we go, because I need to start work shortly is the V-actor. Now, strictly speaking, um, and, and scientifically speaking, this is not emitting a shockwave. Um, it's more of a, of a vibration tool, which is excellent for preparing the tissue. The reason I want to talk about this is when you get those super sensitive patients, um, and there's no chance you're gonna be able to use shockwave on any bar level, do about 2,000 shots of this over the area first. Desensitize it, desensitize the area, get that hyperstimulation anesthesia, and then you can move on to your radial shockwave. Try and get to at least a bar pressure of 1.8 if you can. I think that's where we're most therapeutic. We're all aiming, as the science says, to get to 2.5 bar pressure. You can increase the hertz, the number of shots per second, to make it more comfortable for the person. But as you increase that hertz, you decrease the depth that the shockwaves are getting into the tissue. So please bear that in mind. If I'm doing, for example, a piriformis, I've got hertz of eight, I'm using a deep impact head, and I may be giving 3,000 shots, not just sticking with the R15 and, and doing 2.5 and just 2,500. Play around with it, see what gets you your best results. I've got a whole list of protocols. If you want me to give you those for the seven key tendons, I can post those on the comments. I really want to know what you want to know um, next week from, from these little vlogs, so please do put your um, queries and questions underneath here so I know what to talk about next week. It's Paul Hobra for Ben Healthcare and Physio and Therapy UK Limited. Follow us on Twitter. It's at Hexham N, as in and for N, um, Harley Street, Hexham and Harley Street. Follow us on, on Twitter, at Physio and Therapy UK on Facebook. Um, and let's get a bit of a conversation going between all the Shockwave users around the world. Thanks very much.